Um, my name's Macy. I'm doing the creative IOP for the Green Mile. Um, my thesis, the purpose of my IOP is to discuss the biblical references that appeared in Threes and the Green Mile, written by Stephen King and the film directed by Frank Darabont. Um, I'm going to be looking at every use of three and analyzing them, and I created a painting that will represent Paul Edgecombe and Percy Wetmore shaking hands, making a deal. Um, I made the painting to represent the biblical aspects that were referenced um, in the Green Mile novel and film. Um, I chose the deal with the devil because it led to a main event that happened in the Green Mile. Um, I wanted to incorporate the abstract ideas that Stephen King tried to display and I felt that a painting would do that best. Um, I, want, I used certain, certain lighting, color, and texture to represent good and evil. Um, I am going to be doing the three miracles that John Coffey performed through the Green Mile and other events that occurred in the use of three. Um, which they're diff The miracles are different severities. One's just healing a urinary infection. The other is healing a small little mouse. And then the third one, the biggest one, is healing a lemon-sized brain tumor. So the first miracle, we see Paul in a lot of pain. And then we see John Coffey that just healed Paul. Um, he literally would like break into a sweat because it was so bad. And he fell to his knees on the mile at work because it was excruciating pain. Um, so John said, hey boss, like, come over here. And Paul went not knowing what John was capable of. And when Paul was grabbed and healed, he was in shock. And he realized that John was something of the supernatural. Um, so Paul asked, what did you do to me? And John said, I helped it, didn't I? I, I just took it back is all. And then Paul explains how there was a calming feeling in his groin because it was healed and um, there was a sense of peace and anyone who had suffered bad pain and then had it taken away knew what it was feeling and what he was talking about. The second miracle is uh, Mr. Jingles when Percy stepped on him. Um, John Coffey performed this healing of the mouse, uh, Delacroix's little pet mouse. Um, Delacroix wanted to show Brutal and Paul what, how um, Mr. Jingles knew how to play fetch. So when he threw the spool, it bounced out of the cell and it rolled. So Mr. Jingles chased after it and um, he found, when Percy saw an opportunity, he found the opportunity after he had been made a fool of by this mouse, chasing it and not being able to find it. So he stepped on it and everybody was in shock and they were all like, why would you do that? So then John held his hand out and said, bring him to me, it still might be enough time. So everybody is wondering what's happening except for Dell and Paul. They both witnessed the urinary infection healing. So they took Mr. Jingle, uh, Paul took Mr. Jingles to John and, um, and then we see the tail start to move with life, showing that he's being revived that it wasn't too late. So Dean asks, what did you do? And John says that he helped Dell's mouse become a circus mouse. Um, he's going to live in the mouse city that they talked about down in Tallahassee, Florida. And he said that boss Percy is bad and that he stepped on Dell's mouse, but he took it back. Again, he said he took it back. Um, Del Croy said that he's very thankful and Mr. Jingles is too. Um, the third miracle is the biggest. Um, John healing the brain tumor of Melinda, the warden's wife. Um, so this, Paul knows that um, he, John is of a supernatural nature and that he can heal. So he comes up with the idea for Melinda to be healed of her brain tumor. Everybody on the um, mile agrees that the guards except for Percy, he's not in on it. And um, so they take John to the warden's house and um, 
she has her good days and bad days, and we see when they walk in, she's throwing out mean names, and she's not being herself. And so, um, they before they mention anything to John about it, he already has a feeling that he knows he's going to go and help and heal, and they don't know how he feels that feeling when they haven't told him, and they, he doesn't know either. And so, the textual evidence... It says, um, do you know where we're taking you? And he said, to help a lady. He said, that's right, but how do you know? And he says, don't know. To tell the truth, boss, I don't know much of anything. So he doesn't understand how he has these feelings of knowing, but he does. And so Melinda said that she dreamed of him and that they found each other in the darkness. So that's representing like him helping her and that they aren't lonely and alone. They're together. Um, and then the next three I'll do analyzing is the three match cuts of Dell's execution. The first match cut is when um, Dell is just beginning to feel the pain and his head is thrown back for the very first time and then it cuts to John who's sitting in his cell bed and he's seeing that like we see him cringe and that he throws his head back too so we know that it's beginning he's beginning to feel it so this is referencing that he's a barrier barrier between life and death um, the second match cut is of their hands. Um, he's sitting in the same position as Dell, and his hands are both cringed. And um, just like how Dell's is when he's strapped to the chair. And this is to make sure we see the connections that are being made, and that we can see that John is feeling everything that Dell is, and how, like, the coincidences of them throwing their heads back. It wasn't just a coincidence, it was planned, like it was a similar action, like they both feel it. And then the third match cut is when Dell begins to catch fire <coughs> and he begins to smoke. Um, this is showing that, once again, John's feeling everything. And when Dell's catching fire and feeling excruciating pain, John is also feeling it, and that his pain increases as well. Um, during his brutal execution, we focus on the guard's reaction. So we end the match cuts and we just focus on the guards and why Percy would do this and what actually caused it to happen because the sponge wasn't wet. So why Percy would not wet the sponge. And then the three shakes is what I did my painting on. Um, I'll be analyzing the meaning behind the shake, my color choices, the lighting, and then the texture of the paint I chose. The meaning behind the handshake so Percy has a job offer to go to a men work at a men mental institution, but Paul wonders why he hasn't accepted it yet. The reason he hasn't is because he wants to be the one to say roll on to and be out front and center for an execution. So he makes a deal with Percy that if, he puts, if Paul puts him out front, that he'll put in his transfer effective as soon as possible. And so this is him making a deal with the devil and Percy's the evil character just wanting to be the one to kill someone and Paul's being the good in this. Um, so Paul here it is saying, if I put you out front, you have to put in that transfer, that's the deal. And Percy's like, all right, all right. And then Paul says, if you make a promise to a man, you shake his hand and like shook his hand. So the color choices I chose, um, good is associated with more positive, brighter colors and with a more relaxing thing, theme, and good is more natural and muted. So I chose white, light blue, and uh, tropical blue. And blue is a color that's mostly com uh, commonly compared with like a hero. And then for the evil side, I represented the more negative, darker colors with a rigid theme. And um, evil is more darker, and red is associated with the villain characteristics. So I chose black, bright red, ripe tomato, and yellow. My lighting choices, on the left side I have Paul because in the Green Mile, if you go left, it's life. So I put the goodness on the left side. And on the right, I have Percy's hand, which is, uh, if you go right, it's to the um, execution room. So with the lighting, I have like the blue and the white and the other blue radiating from his hand, like the abstract feeling of goodness and magic. And then on the right side, Percy's hand, I have the uh, darker colors radiating
from his hand of the wickedness and darkness. And then the texture. Um, on Paul's side, I used a glossy acrylic to do the, like, the shine of goodness and purity. And then on the right side of Percy's, I used matte acrylic to show like the dullness and darker. And then it's not shiny to make it like goodness. It's more muted. And then um, for the lighter colors and textures, it was referencing like uh, St. Christopher, which is goodness. And then it says like, he'll keep you safe. So please wear it for me. So that's, again, safety is a positive aspect. And then miracles are like the most un unbelievable miracle of all happens in um, weird scenarios. So miracles, again, are good. And then the darker colors and textures. Um, there's three quotes, and they all mention, like, darkness. And it says, time takes it all, time bears it away, and in the, and in the end, there's only darkness. And sometimes we lose them there. So, again, being lonely and all alone. And then um, when John says he's tired of all the pain, he feels and hears, hears in the world every day. There's too much of it. It's like pieces of glass in his head. And then um, when he asks if, like, since it's a strange place, if there's a light that we'll be able to be on because he is afraid of the dark. 